we talked to we talked to Al and he says Beeman would have more insight on this. What was sure. it like directing Schneider knowing this was a pivotal big well, moment I, where he knew he was going to die? Yeah, I mean, everyone knew it was coming, right? Like John Schneider knew from the time he took the job that his character doesn't survive this, you know, the myth, the mythos of yeah. small. He was upset when they told him at the beginning of the season that he was going to die. Well, he loved the, it's funny. He was a lot like me. Now I was choosing to leave and he you know, it was his character's time had come, but it made it more emotional. I think it made his his role stronger. I mean, he he knew he was that he, he knew it. that he wasn't going to be on the show forever because the character doesn't live into the into the Superman years. Um, he didn't necessarily know when it was going to happen, but he didn't want to leave the show. He loved it, you know. Um, yeah. I think it informed his performance. It's a great performance, you know. I really think he put his heart into it. And then, ironically, you know, I came back and directed the series finale and the season nine finale, and he came back and as a ghost and appeared in more episodes. And yeah. know, anyway, so it wasn't really the end for us. Who knew? Yes, but Greg, when you're directing those scenes, I always thought that right when he dies, was there a moment where he talks to Clark and talks to Martha, or was that never written? Because I love how it just ended, where he gives a look to each of them and dies. So was there more dialogue that was eventually cut out? I don't remember. I don't think so. Do you think so, Tom? I don't remember that. No, I, think I, I don't remember as well. I think it was. I don't. It, was it was such a tight script, you know. Yeah, there there may have been a you little. Know, the thing is, I remember this and there. ironically because it was it was um, John Glover who normally was just. I never even had to think about his performance in that scene where he came in and was uh, taunting Jonathan and kind of induced his uh, heart attack. John had a little bit of trouble with that scene. He was nervous. I don't know why. I just remember like, oh, this is weird. Schneider was fine. And I remember Glover was like a little anxious and nervous about that scene. Uh, and I kind of remember having to like hold his hand and go like, it's okay. Yeah, you're good. You're, everything's great. Right. It was interesting. Yeah. I think everyone, you know, and I know Annette was really sad. Annette was really sad in that scene where he dies. You know, it was There's a, sad a lot of physicality in that scene between John and John and in in some ways he gets you know he gets thrown down to the ground but he it's it's all in service of the story and so maybe that was part of like why am i you know why am i doing this but um i don't know hey but, greg how is it that you you have this innate ability to see something through the lens and say good moving on where a lot of directors don't they keep filming it over and over to make sure they have it and you always like I always felt like if it was take two and we got it, we got it moving on like you were so confident. Is that something through experience or is it I mean, it's a brave thing to do, you know, on a on a show. I guess it is. You know, they have that theory of like the 10,000 hours, uh, right? Like it, what there's what's that book? It's called Outliers. And it's the, one of the reasons yeah. that the Beatles were so great is because they played every single night, two sets in Germany for like two years. And so they got the theory was after you do something for 10,000 hours, you become an expert at it. And, you know, I started directing when I was 23 years old doing, you know, and I directed your favorite movie license to drive when I was like 27. So, <laughs> so, you know, I, somewhere in the middle of Smallville, I, rem I feel like I got the 10,000 hours and, um, you know, like I look at things very, um, technically in a way, like if I, print take two and move on i'm going to get more time for the next shot i'll get more shots at the end of the day or i'll get more time to do the shots i want to do right you know i do have the innate ability which not everybody since i've supervised so many other directors i now know that i can see i really can if i, I can walk into a room and i can imagine it from every point of view not everybody can do that and i can see uh -huh. it edited i can see it edited before it's edited so i know what pieces of film we need and what pieces of film we don't need and you knew where you were going to be. So like the idea of shooting a master of the Kent of inside the barn and spending five minutes to see the whole thing. You were one of the ones who were like, once we get the crane shot, we establish this wide shot cut. You know what I mean? Like, like why are we like, doing move we're on never to the important be stuff? Cause shot. we're going to be on that for very little yeah. time. If I could teach other here. people to do that, I would, I know Glenn winter who kind of was my protege. Is also like yeah. that, right? He's. I think he saw yeah. that I did that, and he learned that you can do that. I think a lot of people just aren't confident that you won't get in trouble if you don't do it. But the fact of the matter right. is, you won't get in trouble if it turns out good. That's really the bottom. <laughs> you feel confident that it's not good. well, then, then you don't. You know, you don't. No one is monitoring whether you do a million pieces of coverage. 
they watch the director's cut. And if they're happy with it, nobody goes back and says, how come he didn't get more coverage? But right. you had there were some moments I remember you where you're like, you know, Alan Miles are going to chew my ear off. They're, they're not going to be happy with me. And there were battles to be had. And they're like, you know, because you would you know, you would go your own way sometimes. And uh, those were there was never that. But that was never on set. You never brought that to set. But if but Beeman I mean. would tell me he's like, oh, man, because Beeman and I were writing a pilot and we wrote a script together. We, and uh, I just remember being with him a lot and him going, oh, I don't want to get this call. <laughs> I don't want to answer this, <laughs> you know, because they're going to say, you know, because he because look, look, I, I, again, in retro, they were my first showrunners. Right. And the first guys that I worked for. And. Now, again, 20 years later, I realize how great they were, how much they trusted me and and how clear they were in what made them happy and what made them not happy. So, you know, and they knew what they wanted the show to be like. They were very clear. I certainly added style and 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 some techniques that we used and, and i think i helped you guys learn to be better actors but yep not again not you absolutely you were you were already great <laughs> thank you 